You're probably already wondering, with the advance in processing capability brought about by parallel processing, will software keep pace? Well, the answer is yes. And here's a closer look. MVS uh, version 5 release 1 provides value, uh, tremendous value to customers in a number of areas. Uh, we're working towards a more exception driven method of systems management rather than a hands on at all times uh, method. Uh, we are driving graphical, object oriented user interfaces into um, the products that I mentioned uh, so that from this single workstation, the operator is now seeing um, icons instead of having to face a, a line mode command interface. So the customer or the operator now has the ability to use drag and drop techniques. Uh, the operator can do exception monitoring by seeing how colors change on a screen. Uh, the basic look and feel of all these different products has started to become standardized so that they really do have this single look they really do have the ability to use uh, more intuitive techniques for managing the systems. So what you see um, when you look at an MVS management console or operator's console uh, is kind of what you would see if you were to look at an OS2 system today. But leaving the parallel sysplex aside for the moment, uh, there are a number of items in version 5 that are of interest to every customer. The workload manager that we've talked about clearly is, is of great interest because it simplifies the management of a single MVS system. And this goes back to our goal of reducing the total cost of computing for everybody. Open Edition, of course, is of interest to any customer who's looking to leverage themselves into the open and distributed world. Uh, a lot of the systems management changes that we made in support of the parallel sysplex are also applicable in the non-parallel world as well. Uh, software cloning uh, is useful to a customer that runs multiple MVS systems, perhaps not in a sysplex configuration. They can use this technique in order to basically reduce their cost of management of multiple systems. And the graphical uh, object-oriented interfaces of the systems management products apply to any customer as well. So many of the things that we've talked about as we've been discussing the parallel sysplex also apply to the, to the regular customer also apply to the non-parallel customer as well. And of course, as, as I said when I opened, there are a number of line items within the release that are of interest. Um, I'll pick two out as, as examples. One of them is the uh, four-digit device support. Uh, this is a long-standing requirement from our customers, uh, especially from customers who find themselves constrained with the uh, number of devices that they have to have on their system. With version 5 release 1, we've now gone to a, a four-digit method of specifying these devices. In this release, this will give the customer about 1,500 additional devices that they'll be able to define. Uh, this is the first step towards a full implementation of four-digit support, um, but at least right now we're, we're giving that extra 1,500. Another item that's of very much, very great interest to uh, CICS users is something that we're calling the subspace group facility. You may remember that uh, we introduced in version 4, release 3, something called subsystem storage protection, which was a feature of both the hardware and the software that essentially isolated the CICS region from its application regions. While the subspace group facility now takes that a step further so that the CICS applications are isolated from each other. So this gives the CICS customer um, a quantum leap in uh, availability benefits beyond uh, what we even gave them with uh, 4.3 Subsystem Storage Protect. Uh, we want to bring our customers forward into the new world of version 5 without having the, to force them to abandon what they already have. And I think we've succeeded on all of these elements with version 5.